Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Kreider Leadership Podcast. Larry Kreider here in the studio with me today again is my long-term friend, Steve Prokopchak. Welcome back, Steve. Thank you so much for having me back. I uh, love, love interviewing you. You have so much to offer. We've been together in leadership and ministry and staff and whatever for yeah. almost 38 years. Almost. Is that right? That's correct. And Steve, yeah. it has been a joy. You've been known for many things, obviously, your writings, your speaking, your leadership, your mentoring, and et cetera, et cetera. But you've been known as a man of integrity, and you write about integrity, and you teach mm-hmm. on integrity. So today, I'm going to pick your brain, and we're going to talk about integrity a bit and some things that you've learned about that. Let's start with this story I've heard you share already, a personal story about when you were a child about integrity and honesty. Share yeah. that with us. Yeah, it, this goes back over 60 years ago. Wow. But it's like it happened yesterday. I was a, just a little guy. We were walking around a five-and-dime store. Yeah. And I watched a gentleman, he he was looking at sweatshirts, and there were two different types. There was a more expensive one and a less expensive one. And I watched him change the price tags. Of course, the less expensive one had a lower price, so he put that that price tag on. The one he wanted, which was the more expensive one, took it to the cash register and paid a lesser price. Now, I didn't necessarily had the concept that he was stealing. I was I was too young. But I watched that happen knowing that that right. wasn't integral. Something's wrong. Yeah, right? something's <laughs> awry, right? Well, okay, then let's talk about integrity. Yeah. Give me a definition that would help us understand what is integrity. Yeah, in- integrity is a, a strict adherence to an ethical value. Integrity is walking and healing and wholeness. So okay. if there's unhealthiness in our lives, it's a little bit harder. Uh, to walk in integrity. It's being honest uh, with ourselves and with others. It's a, it's a, some would say a soundness of moral character uh, yeah. in our lives. But he, here's an observation about integrity that I've made a long time ago, that if we lack wholeness in an area, you know I spent many years doing uh, counseling yes. and family therapy, mm-hmm. but if we lack wholeness in an area, we'll almost certainly lack some integrity in that area. And we can see in the body of Christ today, so many have been involved in leadership and and, in their family and church, whatever, after many years have fallen because of a lack of integrity. Yes. You often say that we were created for a Genesis 1 and 2 world, but we live in the Genesis 3 world. Explain that. Yeah, we, you know, God's whole plan was for us to live in that Genesis 1, Genesis right. 2, that perfect garden, that perfect yeah. world, yeah. where we would walk with God, where there wasn't sin, where there wasn't destruction, where there wasn't disease. Um, yeah, and, and, and that's the world that we were created for, and that's the world that we'll walk in again one day. But right, right. now, because of the fall of man, Genesis mm-hmm. 3, we walk in this very, very imperfect world. So in this imperfect world, uh, there is a lack of integrity. Right. It's a lack of integrity among the church, of course, but politicians, government officials. I mean, it's across uh, the board, the, the lack of integrity. Y- you often equate um, the whole aspect of fear keeping you in alignment. So that's the law, and that's the world's method. Okay. So an example I've often used, my wife and I were traveling on a Memorial Day weekend, and we were on one single highway for quite a length of time. Right. And in the time we were on that highway, we passed no less than 12 different state troopers sitting there waiting on this holiday weekend to catch speeders. Now, People were still speeding, right? but they were dependent upon their radar or their GPS or whatever it was to tell them, you know, slow down. So speeders are still obviously caught. However, here's the thing. Even with 12 police cars, which is to instill fear into the public so that you don't get stopped and you don't get a ticket, um, 
people were still speeding. So people often say, well, if, if you're in fear of something, you know, if you're respectful fear, it'll hold you into integrity. But actually, that's law and that's not grace. Mm. And law doesn't hold you right. in integrity. I mean, if that were true, people who smoke would stop smoking. Right. Every pack of cigarettes says this product that's produces right. cancer. So do you have a fear of cancer? And shouldn't that stop you from smoking? But it, it, it does not. Yeah. I remember some years back, you created this list that I thought was really, really insightful. There were observations about walking in integrity or walking in the lack of integrity mm-hmm. and the consequences. Can you share some of that with us? Yeah. We, we actually, I know you added some things to this list yourself, and, and we have spoken this uh, multiple times. But when you're, when you're walking in integrity, you would maintain your personal testimony yeah. before everyone right. and before God. Uh, when you maintain maintain integrity, your, 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 um, your marriage is uninhibited. If you're walking in a lack of integrity, it absolutely affects your marriage. It affects your family. It'll affect your children uh, if you're not walking in integrity. So I don't want to embarrass my family because of a failure you know, on my part. And that's not because of fear, but because I know I love them and I yeah, want them to right. love and respect right. me. Right. Um, depending on your level of leadership, if you lack integrity, you might have to walk away from it, or yeah, you might be dismissed true. from it. Uh, if you don't, if you're in, in, and again, depending on your lo- level of leadership, your name might be found in the newspaper. All right. I mean, right. there might be something that's that lets the world know mm. that you didn't walk in integrity. Uh, you won't have to face rumors and gossip mm-hmm. and lies mm-hmm. uh, if you uh, walk in integrity. You won't have to face far-reaching untold consequences right. of, of the lack of walking integrity and, and just how that affects you personally, how it affects your walk with God, how it affects your marriage and your family. Uh, you won't have to face lawsuits. You won't have to forfeit friendships. Right. Uh, right. You know, it just, we suffer the consequences when we don't walk in integrity. You won't have overwhelming thoughts of failure. You'll be able to sleep at night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll be able to wake up in the morning and face anyone and not be afraid right. of facing right. someone who knows who's found you out, you yeah. know, that you haven't uh, walked in integrity. Uh, so, yeah, there, there are, I mean, the list goes on, but you can look at your family and your wife and your, your husband. You can look at your children in the eye and know that you haven't failed them and haven't right. disappointed them. Right. Uh, I love that about a clear conscience. Mm-hmm. And I love that God mm-hmm. is so good to bring us conviction, yeah. not condemn us, but bring us mm-hmm. conviction in areas of our lives where we do lack integrity. Right. You know, Steve, we've served together on an international leadership team for many years, and something we've told one another again and again and again, we are committed to finishing well. Yeah. Because even in the Bible, many of the examples of leadership, kings and on and on, did not finish well. Correct. And we need God, obviously, and to, to finish well, but God give us grace to finish well. What are some other... You know, very real life examples of areas to walk integrity in. You know, integrity is far reaching. It doesn't just touch the moral aspect of our lives. And it's not just what we uh, will not do, Mm -hmm. but it also includes what we will do. Okay. So I've known lots of leaders who have are integral in their life until it comes to their finances. Yeah. And their finances are an absolute mess. Wow. I mean, their credit cards are maxed out, or they're, they're in debt, mm-hmm. uh, they're not paying their bills on time. So there, there, there are things that we, yeah, we'll stay away from this, this, and this. But there are also areas where we have to be involved in, 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 in making things right and things that we're supposed to do. Uh, so debt and credit and, uh, credit and uh, maybe someone who's, who says, I, you know, I'm, I, don't, I won't have the revelation to tithe. I'm not tithing. Yeah. Now that, that would lack in, in integrity to right. us. So uh, integrity is always full of truth. Um, it, it's always 100% truthful. Yeah. So we may not outright lie, but we may leave some important facts out. Sure, sure. We may say things that help us to look good and that other person to look bad, and it's not 100% truthful. What do the scriptures say about integrity? Did any key scriptures have helped you personally in the whole area of being an integrous person, leader, husband, father, etc.? Yeah, I love that the scriptures are not silent about this topic. You know, integrity, is it's God's choice. First Kings 9 says, God told David to walk before him with integrity mm-hmm. of heart and uprightness. Uh, 
Here's the interesting thing. Integrity is something I have to choose. In, in the book of Job, Job said he would not deny his integrity and his conscience would not reproach him. David wrote this about that, about integrity. He said, vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity. Wow. Integrity starts in the heart. First Chronicles 29 says, God tests our heart and is pleased when he finds integrity in our hearts. Uh, it's easier, actually, to not be a man or woman of integrity. Uh, even Job points this out when Job's wife, the person who should have helped hold him right. accountable to integrity, right. it, it, Job's wife asked Job if he was going to hold on to his integrity. Why don't you just curse God and die? Yeah. I mean, oh, can you imagine that kind of encouragement from your, from your <laughs> wife? Integrity is something you grow in. Psalm 103 says, God will remove our transgressions, have compassion, realizing that we are but dust. Uh, finding a model to emulate in integrity. Uh, I always admired how you and, and Laverne, your wife, walked in integrity all the 44 years that you led uh, the Dove movement and were uh, a leader within Dove. So finding a model, uh, Titus, you know, be an example, mm -hmm. show integrity. Exactly. Um, it means humbling ourselves when we fail. Uh, so don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Mm -hmm. uh, is a good scripture there, Romans 12. It means not being able to defend yourself before others at times. Psalm 25, you know as well as I have as a leader, yeah. something was done in a right. situation and we were not able to reveal it or tell the whole story right. Right. because it wouldn't be totally integral within right. the situation. So our integrity protects us, Psalms 25 says. Integrity upholds us, it says. Yeah, and just a couple yeah, of other scriptures. The Bible's filled with examples. It, it is, yeah, it is, yeah. Of how to walk in integrity. Steve, let's just get practical. What are some practical steps we as leaders can take to walk in high moral character and integrity? Yeah, Proverbs 10 says, the man of integrity walks securely. Mm. If you want to walk securely. Mm-hmm. If you want to walk outside of condemnation, you want to walk uh, free before the Lord and before man, uh, the admonition from the scripture is to, to uh, walk in integrity. Mm -hmm. If we choose not to walk in integrity, we'll eventually need intervention. Yeah. And that's not fun. Right. So, yeah, so there are these two sides, that, will, that which we'll do and and uh, that which, which we won't do. But practical steps. I love this practical step. My wife was an RN, so she worked in the medical field. And there's something in the medical field called self-reporting. So here's what happens. Humans make mistakes all the time. So people in medicine make mistakes. Right. So if she gave a patient the wrong medicine, she immediately has to self-report. Mm -hmm. She immediately has to make out a report. If she does that and she puts it on her computer, she puts it into the system that she gave the wrong medicine, she most likely will preserve her job. Mm -hmm. She most likely will not lose it. If she tries to hide wow. what she did That's so good. and it's found out and she doesn't self-report, she tries to just you know, hold on to her pride and not admit a mistake. It will most likely be found out, and she will most likely uh, be fired. So something I think we desperately need that in the body so of Christ good. is self-reporting. Mm -hmm. We need accountability. We need people to ask us the hard questions. Yep. We need leaders to ask us, are we involved in this? Are we not involved in that? You know, I, I think another thing is assume that anything you say in private can be publicized. Anything. I, I think another thing, watch. If you put something on social media that's not integral, uh, you're going to be found out for yeah, it. True. It's it's going to catch you. Right. So stay humble, stay real, stay accountable, be honest, and be trustworthy. Mm. Uh, we all want to follow the integral politician. We all want to follow the Correct. integral leader. Yeah. Uh, when we work for someone who's who's a man or woman of integrity, we're attracted to that. Yeah. We are not attracted when they ask us to lie or fudge a report Correct. or something of that nature. That was so so good, Steve. Steve, in closing, do you have any warnings for us? Mm -hmm. um, just a couple. Uh, one is, if we're there's an area in our lives that we lack integrity, I guarantee you that it'll surface. Right. And mostly because the Lord really loves you and wants to expose it and wants to help you in that area. The other thing I would say, it takes a lifetime to build integrity. It takes only a few minutes. Wow. 
to lose it. Lastly, I would say this. Most leaders out there want to grow in their leadership. Most leaders want to have a greater level of responsibility. Uh, most leaders want to ar arise within their leadership structure and, yeah, just take on more for the Lord. One of the reasons people don't succeed as they go up that ladder is if they lack integrity or lack healing in an area of their lives and they get promoted to the place where they're not able to sustain their own personal healing and integrity. Mm -hmm. Steve, there's so much more you have written on this. Uh, and, and again, on, check out the show notes. Uh, there's a lot more from Steve Prokopchuk there. His book, Identity, is amazing. Your book's called together, staying together. You know, the many books you've written, many articles you've written. So again, check out the show notes and learn more about Steve, learn more about integrity, uh, learn more about how to be the man or woman of God you've been called to be. So thank you, Steve, for joining oh, me today. Welcome. It was a joy to welcome. have you, and we'll have you back and talk about it much more in the future. And so I want to thank everyone for joining us today for the Larry Carter Leadership Podcast, where we learn these small changes we can make in our lives that, when applied in faith, by the grace of God, will create amazing, amazing, amazing things to change in the future in our lives and the lives of those around us. So we'll look forward to having you back here again real soon on the Larry Carter Leadership Podcast. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com.